Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to do the Unit 2 Investigation 1 Evidence for Enzymatic Activity Lab. COVID makes it such that we can't actually do the lab in class, so Mr. England and I spent some time doing the lab for you guys. Um, you guys are going to be able to see the data and you're going to be able to analyze the data. One big thing you have to make sure you understand throughout the course of this lab is that you can and you should pause the video or rewind it whenever you need to um, record any data to um, rewatch any part of the procedure you have that flexibility okay so please make sure you do that as you um, you watch this video i'm going to read through the introduction with you what would happen to your cells if they made a poisonous chemical you might think that they would die. In fact, your cells are always making poisonous chemicals. They do not die because your cells use enzymes to break down these poisonous chemicals into harmless substances. Enzymes are proteins that catalyze chemical reactions that would otherwise happen more slowly. The enzyme is not altered by the reaction. You have hundreds of different enzymes in each of your cells. The molecule that the enzyme works on is called the substrate. Each of these enzymes is responsible for one particular reaction that occurs in the cell. In this lab, you will study an enzyme that is found in the cells of many living tissues. The name of the enzyme is catalase. It speeds up a reaction that breaks down hydrogen peroxide. The formula for hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, which is a toxic chemical, into two harmless substances, oxygen and water. Light can also break down hydrogen peroxide, which is why the chemical is sold in dark containers. The formula for this reaction is two molecules of peroxide breaks down into two molecules of water plus oxygen. This reaction is important to cells because hydrogen peroxide is produced as a byproduct of many normal cellular reactions. If cells did not break down the hydrogen peroxide, they would be poisoned and die. In this lab, you will study the catalase found in liver cells. You will be using beef liver. It might seem strange to use dead cells to study the function of enzymes. This is possible because when a cell dies, the enzymes can remain active and intact for several weeks as long as the tissue is kept refrigerated. This lab has two objectives. The first objective is to understand the nature of enzymatic activity. The second objective is to observe the factors that impact enzymatic activity. The materials we will use for this lab are as follows. Fresh liver, a stirring rod, forceps, scissors, a hydrogen peroxide solution, a baking soda solution, vinegar, a warm water bath, a hot plate, pipettes or droppers, a test tube holder, and six test tubes. The first part of the lab is part A, where we will observe a normal catalase reaction. So we're gonna do part A of the enzyme activity lab where we are observing a normal catalase reaction. So the first part of the procedure says to obtain a cut piece of liver and add it to the test tube. There's the liver. All right, so we're gonna put it in the test tube smoosh it down in all the way down to the bottom get my stirring rod ew it made a blurp sound <laughs> okay oops there it is down at the bottom of the test tube and it says to put two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide on the liver so I'm going to take the lid off I have to open it Sorry. That's all right. I got it. And I'm going to get a pipette. So this is a one milliliter pipette. So I'm going to take two of them and see what we get. It asks you to observe the bubbles. So that means there are going to be bubbles. And you guys have to determine um, what gas is being released. If you read underneath the, that part of the procedure, it says throughout this investigation, you will estimate the rate of reaction, how rapidly the solution bubbles, on a scale of zero to five. You're gonna assume that this reaction is a three, okay? So this reaction is gonna be a three. 
For all the years I've done this, this is just so cool. I love this part, okay? So now we need to determine whether the reaction is endothermic, which is heat absorbing, or exothermic, which is heat releasing. You guys can't figure this out, so I will touch it and tell you. This has gotten cooler. So if I touched it, right, my hands are on it, it has definitely gotten cooler than room temperature. So you need to figure out whether this reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Okay, so now we're gonna do number three. It says pour off the liquid into a second test tube. So here's a second test tube. We're gonna pour off the liquid. Lovely liver juice Ugh. into the second test tube. And then it asks um, you to figure out what this is made of, assuming the reaction is complete, the reaction that we talked about in the introduction. So take a second and see if you can come up with what that liquid in the new test tube is made of. And then the next question is, what do you think would happen if you, we were to add more liver to this liquid, the liquid that we poured off? So again, take another second, pause the video if you need to, and make a prediction. Now we are going to test it. And you guys, again, have to record the reaction rate between one and five based on what we saw at the beginning um, in step two. This liver is so disgusting. Okay, so will we see a reaction? Will we not? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to pull it out so you can take a look. you can determine the rate of reaction based on this. So now step four says to add more peroxide to the liver remaining in the first tube. So that's this first tube. So I'm gonna take two more milliliters of uh, peroxide and you guys have to determine the reaction rate. Again, go back to that first reaction that we did to know that that's a three. All right, so is it a one, is it a three, is it a five, what is it? Okay. So you guys can determine the reaction rate based on what you see, the bubbles. Now, between question three and question four, the results we got for that you have to determine if catalase is reusable or not. Okay, so take a second, pause the video, and think about whether catalase is reusable or not, reusable or not, and make sure you have evidence to back up your um, answer to the question. So it's like a mini CER. We are now moving on to part B of the lab, which is what is the effect of temperature on catalase activity? So ooh, now we are moving on to part B. We're gonna test the effect of temperature on catalase activity. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna boil some liver, right? So we have a hot water bath, nice and steamy. We have to take a piece of liver, again, ugh, this is gross, and put it down in the bottom of the test tube according to the procedure. It's down there nice. Don't roll. And I have a beaker with a little bit of water in it. We're basically gonna boil the liver or steam the liver. So we've got liver, we've got water, we've got a nice hot, um, hot water bath, and it's gonna cook for about five minutes. You guys don't have to watch it for five minutes. We're gonna stop. Five minutes later. So five minutes have passed and you can see that the liver, I'm gonna pull it out with my tongs. The liver is well cooked and lovely and gray. Okay. Let me get it in here, not break anything. The procedure tells us now to add, I'm gonna let it to air cool for a second. It's cool enough. <laughs> and we're gonna add two milliliters of peroxide again. So I'm gonna take my pipettes and you're going to, again, give us a rate of reaction, give us a rate of reaction 
from one to five using the original, this original here as your um, control. All right, so let's check it out. Here we go. How would you rate that? One to five. We are now moving into the last part of the lab, which is the effect of pH on catalase activity. So now we're on part C. We're going to look at the effect of pH on catalase activity. We have three uh, test tubes set up. We needed one with um, liver and we're going to put vinegar in here or acetic acid. So this is an acid on the acid side of the pH scale. We're going to put water on this one in the middle, which is neutral. Um, with a pH of seven. And then we're gonna put a baking soda solution over top of this one. Um, a baking soda solution makes a base, all right? So we're gonna do one milliliter of solution on each. And then we'll put peroxide on it. So there is the vinegar. Here is the water. And here is the baking soda solution. And in a second, we'll come back and we'll run the tests with the peroxide. So now we are going to add our two milliliters of peroxide to each of the test tubes. We'll start with the vinegar test tube first. Remember, you're gonna watch the bubbles, right? Rated on a one to five scale with this original reaction um, being a three. And now we're gonna add two milliliters of peroxide to the um, tube with just water. And you're gonna rate that reaction from one to five. And now we're going to put our two milliliters of peroxide on top of the liver in the baking soda solution, which is a base. And you're going to rate that from one to five. In the picture you see on your screen, the left hand side are the three test tubes that we used in part C. The one on the far left is the vinegar, which has an acidic pH. The one in the middle is water, which has a neutral pH. And the one on the right labeled with a B is the baking soda, which has a basic pH. You can use this still picture to aid in your um, determination of results. At this point, you have all of the data that you need to start analyzing and answering the three questions under the data analysis section. Again, as we said at the beginning of the video, if you need to go back and revisit any of the procedures, you can rewind this video and do so.